Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Both joined by Drew Galloway here on this Monday as week four has started for K-State football. And it started as it does every single Monday with a press conference in veneer for Chris Kleiman and select players rolling through. So Chris Kleiman went, then Avery Johnson went up, the, went up there, and then a, just you know, a handful of guys kind of shuffling themselves in. And each week we try to bring up a couple of interesting things that Chris Kleiman said. Drew, I, I'll turn to you with this, but it sounds like maybe the most interesting thing is, is that there wasn't a ton of interesting things said, which is pretty indicative of how well K-State played on Friday. And I think how good this team and everybody else around them, fans, media, whoever, feels about them moving forward now. Yeah, I think that starting 3-0 helps. I mean, if you go back and watch, I mean, uh, we typically get 30 minutes with Chris Kleiman, and really I think it ended probably 20 minutes in. So, like, it, there wasn't a lot of questions asked and not a lot of answers. Yeah, it was less than 20 today, 19 minutes today for Chris yeah. Kleiman. And normally that, you're right, that's at least 30 minutes. Yeah, so, like, you look at that, and I think that that's probably the most noteworthy thing is that, you know, you play like that on Friday. I, I think that it's just like an okay – we kind of know what we are, where we're at at this point. So there's nothing like that needs to really even be asked. That's like super crazy. Cause it was probably five, six questions about the game on Friday, probably six or seven about BYU. And then that was that. So, I mean, I, I think that that's just kind of where case state is. And I think that that's a good thing because if there's a lot of things that like are, Oh, that it probably isn't like a great thing. Like, I, I can't imagine that you're having too much success if in week four, like you're learning like crazy new things during a press conference. And, and really, like we've talked about, like the game on Friday kind of left no questions to be had, really. Yeah, and it, it cleaned up a lot of the concerns that were there where I, for most people, I would hope that the concerns that were there weren't anything that you thought were just long-term problems for this team. Uh, I think Chris Kleiman and his staff have been around long enough and proven themselves that when they tell you after the two-lane game that the mistakes that they were making there aren't ones that are hard to to kind of clean up and get fixed, then you believe them. And we had this idea that the defense was going to be pretty good going into the season. One bad performance against Tulane should not change that. And they came out and they proved themselves against a really good Arizona offense on Friday night. And then the offense... Everything flowed a lot better. Drives were more sustained. And while some issues still there, uh, I think you look at it and say they were they came a lot closer to what you'd expect out of them. And the fact that there's room for improvement, even in a game where you score 31 and you win by 24, uh, should be encouraging, especially when it came against the top 25 opponents. So before we move on to anything that was said about BYU, Drew, uh, what were the notes on the performance against Arizona that stood out most to you, either from Chris Kleiman or, you know, when Avery Johnson hopped up there and uh, got to the podium today? Yeah, the first thing was that uh, Chris Kleiman handed out, uh, kind of just talked about guys that really popped to him uh, while rewatching the game, uh, which I thought was kind of uh, interesting to kind of hear about uh, who he thought. And I think that's always something that's really interesting to hear. Uh, Sam Hecht. Uh, the center was the first person uh, that Chris Klein had mentioned as somebody that really was standing out to him. And so that was probably his best game at K-State, uh, which is always a good thing to hear. And you could kind of just see that Sam Peck keeps tech taking steps forward every week and getting more comfortable. Uh, the, the next person was uh, Toby Osinsami, who played uh, more snaps uh, against Arizona than he had uh, the rest of the season so far. And again, he's another one kind of like Sam Peck where, He's starting to get a little bit more comfortable, more acclimated. Remember, Osin Sami had all the splash plays in week one, but he's probably been a more complete player against Arizona than he was against UT Martin, where he was just a lot faster uh, than the UT Martin offensive line. Uh, and then Austin Romain was uh, the third person to be pointed out as like an individual. And, and I think that that's one that you're also just seeing. And, and this is one where if you're just watching the game, you're like, okay, Austin Romain has really taken a step, but it's nice to hear Chris Kleiman talk more about the game slowing down for Romain. And he's still just a true sophomore. I think kind of got a little bit of a bad rep last year 
because he was just kind of forced into a bad situation as a true freshman. Uh, but the other thing that uh, Kleiman noted was just that across the board, he really just thought that K-State really improved from week two to week three. And, and I think that that's a good thing. And that this team is so young that you're going to see these steps be taken forward just about every week as the season gets more and more uh, into it. And, and I think that even in the two lane game, you could still see some flashes from the offensive side. The, the defense was rough, but still only allowed 27. Uh, so, I mean, I mean, I think that you're still seeing all of these flashes and everything in case it's three, no, and probably hasn't played their best football yet. And I think that that's why, a lot of the national media really kind of started to gravitate towards K-State after the game against Arizona. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll dive into the thoughts on BYU in just a moment now, uh, getting ready for that. But first, a reminder that you can join your Wildcats in Ireland as they kick off the 2025 football season against Iowa State in the Aer Lingus College Football Classic. Game tickets can be secured now through a travel or hospitality package. All-inclusive travel packages include premium game tickets, luxury hotel accommodations, and exclusive K-State welcome experience and more. Game day hospitality packages include premium in-stadium hospitality with food and drinks and premium game tickets. Don't miss out on the trip of a lifetime. Book your package now at cats2ireland.com. That's cats, the number two, ireland.com. All right, let's not worry about those Iowa State losers until we have to at the end of the season. And then again, uh, when Ireland comes around next year, focusing on BYU now, probably a, a hot topic of discussion today because everybody in sports, no matter you know how many times we've seen people go on the road and win, whether it be in Denver or Salt Lake City or wherever it is, we love to make a big deal out of the elevation. Uh, no different for Chris Kleiman having to answer some questions about that today. So, uh, what did the head coach of the Wildcats think about getting his team ready to go uh, over 4,000 feet above sea level to play the Cougars? Uh, he said that they're going to do a few things to get adjusted to the altitude. And I think that's more in like the pre and post game rather than during the game. But the other thing that Chris Klein kind of pointed out is that you don't have a lot of time in between like these weeks, like if there was a bye week in between, you probably see K State do a little bit more to get prepared for it, but you kind of have to prepare for it. Like it's a normal week outside of doing like a few things. And he didn't really go in depth uh, about what K State's going to do. And then Avery Johnson just pointed out that, yeah, it's like mostly like stuff during the week that there's like one or two things that we can do to kind of get our bodies prepared. But like, there's nothing like there's no like, one size like fits all kind of cure to kind of get ready for it. Uh, the other thing that I think K state is really kind of getting prepared for and getting used to is uh, the atmosphere because the, the atmosphere in BYU is usually uh, pretty solid and get, can get kind of rowdy sometimes. So I think that you'll kind of see K state use some noise more at practice. I think that was something that Chris Kleiman alluded to today as well. Uh, so I, I think that it's more of kind of getting used to the environment rather than elevation, which I thought was kind of an interesting t thing that he brought up. Yeah, I, I think I, I think what you hear most of the time on stuff like that is that you can't act like you're not actually going to be there long enough to be able to do anything to get your your body ready and adjusted to it. So it's probably just best to go through it and and be able to do whatever in-game measures you can if you feel any of the effects of it. I think in, in a lot of ways, it's kind of an overblown you know, thing. We we all know that it's something that will impact people. Uh, I mean, they talk about even if you're just a regular person changing altitude. But I also think at the end of the day, it, they'll get it figured out. They've been doing this a long time. They've played other places before. Uh, it's It won't be the, the biggest of deals. In terms of uh, where you feel like, BYU uh, is setting up in this game for K-State. Uh, where, where are your thoughts right now? Because I think people are all across the board, whether it's fans on both sides or different people uh, in the media that are like, oh, you know, it's BYU at night. It's going to be tough. Uh, but the team itself kind of seemed like they might suck. So uh, where do you think K-State BYU is going early in the week? Yeah, I'm kind of at that in between. Like, uh, I... I'm not overly impressed with BYU's offense in particular. 
I get Jake Retzloff, like we talked on the Sunday show, he kind of has a tendency to give the ball away to the other team. And I think that if KC can take advantage of that, especially early on, if Retzloff makes a mistake, uh, it could potentially get out of hand even. Uh, but I mean, I, I was talking with uh, some people uh, like we're just waiting on the players to come in and we all kind of got an agreement that the spread if the game was in Manhattan is probably closer to three scores than one touchdown. And I think that it's going to come down to can K-State's offense really kind of get in an early rhythm because I I don't think that BYU has the horses to catch up to K-State. But you're probably going to get BYU's best shot because they're 3-0 and it's a a night game and they're doing a whiteout and they're having a celebration of two different teams there. So they're probably going to play out of their minds. Kalani Satake loves going forward on fourth down. Like I, the we we had to compare this to when Iowa State went to BYU for the first time uh, last year, and Iowa State kind of beat the doors off of them. And then you kind of look at it as, okay, well BYU went forward on their own territory three times and missed them all. So you kind of get that from Satake. You kind of get that from BYU. They're a very high variance team, which kind of makes it more intriguing and also kind of a scary opponent because you know you get one or two plays like that and convert that totally changes the game from losing by like you could lose by 28 or like win the game yeah it it is setting up in a in an odd way and you're right i mean kalani sataki that's the one thing that i've known about him for years is the man is not risk averse he will face it head on and uh, be ready Trick to try plays, and go for it for down. yeah he he leaves nothing everything. out there that could uh, come through and help and you know you think about it last year they got off to kind of an interesting start in, in Big Twelve play um, and then they you know had to switch quarterbacks towards the end uh, of the season and that's when Jake Radzlaff kind of t- took over and they kind of rejuvenated themselves you point out that Iowa State game where you know they went for it multiple times didn't get it. And then to start this season, I, I don't know. They, they've just played some teams that aren't very good. Like Wyoming is not good this year. Southern Illinois is an FCS school. And then that SMU game was just disgusting on both sides. So um, I, I, I don't think that they're a great team. I think as long as everything goes the way it should, uh, K-State can play probably an average game and win. But this is just another one of those where it's the first Big 12 game. It's a team that's going to be starved for a, a signature win, and you're on the road. It, you're probably just going to have to find a way to get out of there with the win, and that's really all that matters, and set yourself up uh, against Oklahoma State the following week. But uh, it will certainly be an interesting time. And, I mean, I want to rule out K-State just showing up and, and getting – you know, the offense is closer and closer to what you want to see. Uh, there's a real chance where K-State could show up and even just, you know, after a couple plays, make you feel a lot better about the game than you never worry about it again, um, which is kind of what they did against Arizona uh, on on Friday night. Yeah, that that SMU game was kind of the the game to me that kind of points out that if Kasich can get the offense rolling, I I don't know if BYU can catch up, and that's that's an eighteen to fifteen win for BYU over what I kind of think is just an okay SMU team. It is a road win for BYU, which was good, and it was good for the league to beat an ACC team. But I, I can't wait, kind of unimpressed with both sides. And then you you look at BYU and how they played against Wyoming, who is awful, and that game really wasn't like a spectacular game on both sides. It's a game where if it's if it's a mucky kind of gross game, it, it definitely favors BYU. So again, get off to a good start. If you can get a non-offensive touchdown again, too. I think that that's kind of a backbreaker for BYU because I don't know if they'll be able to do that unless they score on defense themselves. Uh, The other interesting note that I have found about BYU, which is kind of shows that they're a high variance team one and number two, that their offense has really, really struggled. Uh, Did you realize that BYU almost has more fourth down conversions this season than third down? Uh, No, I did not, but that, uh, that would be a little concerning. BYU has eight fourth down conversions already this season and only 11 on third down. They are 28% on third down so far this season. Hmm. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, you'd rather be 
you'd rather be better on third down so you're not getting to all those fourth downs. Uh, maybe but, they maybe they should just get to fourth down every time. I mean, they're 28 percent on third down, 80 percent on fourth. Yeah, I wonder how many turnovers they have on third down trying to make something happen. So that would yeah. be be kind of fascinating. Uh, any other thoughts from today or as we start week four and getting ready for K-State BYU? Yeah, the uh, I guess the other noteworthy thing that wasn't really noteworthy <laughs> that uh, Coach Kleiman talked about was that he doesn't anticipate anybody being out for the BYU game. So noteworthy in a sense that nobody is out, but also not noteworthy because they were pretty much at full strength going into the Arizona game as well. Uh, but Garrett Oakley did go out with an injury uh, Friday night, so it's nice to hear that he will be back uh, Saturday night. Yeah, and I'll, I mean, Hadley Panzer played through an injury and and played a large chunk of the game and and did some really good things in there. I know that the uh, video of him getting the hands to the face from the Arizona player, and he still finished off his block and everything was going around. So uh, K-State made a, a great performance against Arizona. They look to do the same against BYU this Saturday. And uh, other notes, just to tidy things up for everybody, K-State did move up one spot in the top 25 this week. It, you know, not, Nobody else lost in front of them that kind of struggle, but they were able to jump Oklahoma State because of their impressive performance over Arizona and their game with Oklahoma State still doesn't have a kick time because that is going to be on the six-day selection. So we'll find out Sunday when K-State Oklahoma State kicks off from Manhattan. But BYU time. We'll be back again tomorrow talking more K-State football. For Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. Thanks for watching the KSO Show. If you want more about the Cats, head over to On3, find kstateonline.com. We'll get you set from there and become a member if you're not to join in the discussion about K-State.